getting started with Socio version 0.7. I'm going to be using SvelteKit as the full stack framework plus Vite as the build tool. So simply use npm to create the latest uh, SvelteKit app and that's going to take a while. They have a nice new CLI tool here. Um, we're going to go with the skeleton project. Uh, I'm going to be showing this off in TypeScript, so that's fine. I'm um, not going to use any other of those tools. We're going to CD into that new folder. You can hear it's been created. It has that uh, weird icon there because of the name. And then we're going to run npm i to install the uh, basic dependencies of the SvelteKit framework. Then in here, we can see that uh, a bunch of known modules have been uh, downloaded. And here in the package JSON, right ahead, I'll change the port to 5000 because that's more convenient for me. And then you can see here the current dependencies, the, the, the versions that they have currently. Uh, then to run the skeleton project, just do npm run dev. Let's just start it up on port 5000, there it is. And we can see here there's the demo project open on port 5000. Next I'm going to close that down because we're going to edit some things. So of course I'm going to install Socio, uh, but we're also going to need SQLize and SQLite 3 because that's what I'll use as the temporary database. It's just very convenient uh, to host the database in, in RAM. And you can see here uh, currently what the versions are. Next in the source folder, I will create a new hooks.server.ts file. Uh, this is a special file in SvelteKit that will essentially be run on the first request to the actual production live server or the dev server. So basically on startup uh, because we want to initialize some socio stuff on startup. So so from core, we're going to import the socio server, which is the important thing. I'm going to put this whole thing in a try catch because maybe this might fail. Uh, and then we're going to instantiate the socio server. So And that's going to need some options, for example, the port. And I'm going to run that on the 3000 port. And here you can also specify things like uh, per message deflate, so you can import that from util, and even passing in an HTTP server so that this socket server also runs on your existing web server. Uh, then a very important other thing is the DB query function. Uh, and for now, since we don't have a DB, I'm just going to make that be an empty thing. Um, and that's going to give me an error, and that's fine expect that error um, and also for debugging purposes I will turn on verbose so next we're actually going to edit the index page uh, here's the route for that uh, this is the index route and this is the text that we saw there before so we can just put a script tag here I'm gonna go ahead and say that, that is a not type script uh, script import socio client the same thing, um, core client this time, a friendly message says socio or something. Now I'm going to run the server again, npm run dev, and we can see that uh, socio server was created on that port, so that's fine. We refresh this, here we have socio. We're also going to need some Svelte things, uh, like on mount and on destroy. Uh, these are just lifecycle hooks for the component because the page is also kind of like a component. So on mount is gonna run once when the component loads in. So this will be useful for getting started with uh, sending socio messages. But before we can do that, we actually need to instantiate the client. So um, say socio client sc uh, socio client, and you're just gonna give it the URL, and it is the WebSocket protocol. In production, you're gonna want to use uh, the secure version, uh, but for right now, it's localhost. So we'll do this and we launched it on the port 3000. Uh, you can give it some other options, for example, like name, that's gonna come in handy in a moment, but not right now. And I'm also gonna specify that I want it to be verbose because I wanna see, because I wanna demonstrate the console logs. Now that we have SC, we can actually um, await because it's an async anonymous function. So we can await stuff and we're gonna wait the SC ready. And if we save that down, take a look here, uh, we can see that socio client uh, websocket has connected and refresh that you know uh, but now on the refresh we see that here uh, windows not defined that is because svelte is trying to server side render this page but it can't because socio client works with browser web apis 
uh, and I'm running this on Node, which doesn't have those on the back end. If you're running this on Dino, this shouldn't be a problem, and you should be able to service our render. The, the current circumstance, I'm going to have to create a new file here, plus page.ts. And in here, I'm going to tell uh, Svelte to not server side render this page. We see, other, we see here that it loads up, and I refresh it, and it's all fine. Back to the Svelte kit server side stuff, uh, let's actually implement the database real quick. We installed SQLize before, so I'm gonna just gonna grab that import. I'm gonna create this uh, handy function here to uh, handle setting up the database, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna call that function, and I'm gonna have to await that. And I can do top level await here because it's TypeScript and it's ES6, I think. Now that I have an instance of SQLize, I can actually implement this function, but instead of just writing it out here in a very long manner. For convenience, I'm just gonna make a wrapper function for it real quick. And that's basically gonna be this. And that's gonna give me an error because, okay, just import that. So session is also not gonna know what ID is. Um, it is putting the imports down here, that's not good. Uh, let's put them back up here. Right, so now we have all the things and I can use query wrap here and that shouldn't give me an error anymore. There we go. Beautiful. Then on the page side of things, we can actually do, we can start doing some queries, which is the interesting bit. Um, so I'm gonna import log from logging because that's much more convenient. And I'm gonna wait a C doc query. We're gonna do just a raw query, just a single one. Um, select star from users. And it's a sin to do any kind of SQL in lowercase. All right, so I'm adding this, uh, what I call a marker, but it's really just an SQL co comment. For now, it doesn't matter, but it's gonna matter in a second. So it's just gonna execute that, and I'm gonna relaunch the server. Here we can see it loaded up, and we got, uh, we sent these this SQL. Here you can see it's raw SQL. Uh, and we received the response from that because there are two users in there, and we got them. We got all the fields from them. If we take a look at the network panel here, it's much bigger. We can see, for example, this message where the SQL was sent, it's raw SQL, it's raw SQL string, which is super not secure, do not do this. Um, but for debugging purposes, I guess you can. We're gonna fix this in a second. Back in the server script here, uh, I'm gonna instantiate, if I can spell, uh, what do we call this? Uh, socio security. Um, the socio security class, and that's gonna need some parameters. It's gonna need a private key, so in production you should load this from an environment variable. Uh, and you can do that with the npm package.env uh, or any other way you wanna do it really. And then we actually need to tell the socio server that this exists. Uh, so socio security is simply the instance of so socio security. And now it's gonna be able to use this instance to both decode and uh, to decrypt and encrypt various procedures but socio server is a runtime class, which means it's not gonna do anything to your SQL that you have on in your framework, in your source code written up. So this is gonna stay as it is. So we actually need to parse these files ourselves, detect where we have these strings, and then encrypt those in the actual production JavaScript files. And when those get received, this will be able to decrypt them. And this encryption you can do completely yourself with the socio security class. But since we're using Vite as the build tool, we can let Vite do this step for us and do it every time the production or development server gets reloaded, automate it all. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna go in the Vite config here. I will import the Vite plugin of Socio Security, and then I'm gonna add that in the plugins list. This needs to have the same private key as this hooks uh, Socio Security. These keys need to be the same. So again, using environment variables should be the most convenient way to do that. Here you can also give it extra options. For example, like what kind of uh, file types to include which should be an array of like .js or whatever, and also to exclude some file types. The default include files are these. So now we can restart the server. And we see now that the SQL that was actually sent is completely encrypted. Look at the network panel again. Here we see the data that was sent through is actually this encrypted long string. So let's do something more interesting with uh, Svelte to show the power of Socio. I'm gonna declare some state here users equals this and then I'm going to subscribe to the changing list of users on the back end so 
I want to subscribe to some kind of SQL. And it's going to be pretty much the same thing as here uh, with no parameters. So that should be completely fine. So now it should be subscribed to that. And the callback that we're going to get is going to be some kind of object. I'm going to say users is equal to this uh, result. So now whenever uh, the users table anything changes on it, this callback will be called automatically here. And we can listen to this, or we can show this. And on destroy, just for safety, I'm going to unsubscribe to all. Usually you wouldn't do this, but um, just to clean up, to demonstrate that, here we, here we have it. Um, the, subscribe, the subscription went out with this query parameter here. And then we received an update that these are the two users that we have currently in the database. And that is reactive, but we're not doing anything to show that it's reactive. So we're going to create a button here. It's a very simple button. Uh, say insert John and on click I'm gonna do since I declared um, the constant SC here I have it available here which is very convenient and we can do a simple insert and then uh, here I'm using some dynamic par parameters. So I will also add those here as the params. So name, let's say is John and number. What kind of number do we want to give him? Nope, that's the wrong kind of number. I don't know, 420 or something. So if we now try to insert, we see that through the magic of Svelte's reactive state and Socio's magic real-time communication, uh, we inserted a new record in there just by pure SQL and we see that this new record got propagated to the client and um, as a matter of fact to all clients if I have two instances here if I add to one it's gonna add to both of them uh, because they're both running the same version of this page and they're both therefore subscribed to these changes and I can do it from either one of these of course and if you want to unsubscribe to this particular query you can do const ID equals this because subscribe returns the actual ID and then um, you can unsubscribe that particular ID at any point. And back on the server side, you can do some interesting things here. You have the whole uh, socio session or client available. So it has like ID and IP address, and you can check if it's authenticated, uh, even though uh, you can handle that much better with socio string markers. So that's here in the page. You can add stuff like um, auth, meaning that this query can only be executed by an authenticated client. And how do you authenticate? You do sc dot authenticate and call this with some params and then you handle that through a socio server lifecycle hook and I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, you can add perms here. So meaning that this session needs the select permission on this table in order to execute it. So again, you won't even get to this query wrap function if that check does not go through. But yeah, you can just from the client, you can also just straight up send uh, through the websock if you so want to. More useful stuff here is in the uh, socio server. So you can get the list of uh, lifecycle hook names to for your convenience so you know what you can register to and then you actually register like this so it's like for example message will be uh, will run this function whenever a new message comes into the server uh, that's after decrypting and performing the checks. You can also either uh, get the client session by its ID or send to all clients. And if you leave this um, as an empty array, then it will emit to all connected clients. So that way you can create something like a global chat app, even though Socio provides a basic chat app mechanism as well through the chat class. Uh, but more interesting thing I wanna show here uh, is register a Socio server prop. Uh, give it a name called color and a default value of something. Is that six? That's six, yep. Uh, and normally you'd also give it an, an assigner function, but um, currently I know this is a demo page and I trust whatever value comes in should just be accepted. But normally there you would uh, perform some checks to see if to validate the data that's coming in from the client. So now that prop is going to be created. If we want to subscribe to that actual prop, we do subscribe prop, very simple. Uh, and it's by the same name that you gave it. Uh, and then an on update function 
which is going to give you your val. So whenever this value, this prop changes on the back end for whatever reason, this callback will be called um, so that you can do something like declare a state here called call. Let's say it's some kind of color. That's six. Yep. And then I'm going to just say call equals val. Uh, now val should in this instance be a string, but I'm sure that it doesn't know that. Yeah. And then we're going to add like a box that just displays this color so that I can see it. And then instead of doing an SQL query, you can do likewise uh, set prop. I'm going to be setting color to something like that six. Yep. Um, and call this set prop. And here we see if I change it, the color on one client, the other client, of course, is also subscribed to that same prop, and so it changes. So go ahead and check out the simple documentation page for Socio. Uh, read up on all the things that it can do because it can do a lot of different things, and there are example snippets uh, for all of this how to do how to do how to do most of this stuff. And if you want a template getting started app for Socio. I have that in the demos under full stack framework. Uh, it does run a slightly older version of Socio though. So you're gonna have to update these things yourself, I guess maybe. Maybe I'll get around to it myself. Thank you for your interest. And tune in next time where I find the missing semicolon.